We continue with our discussion on risk management in Unit 2 for Advanced Financial Modeling. And uh, in the previous section, we had seen uh, what happens with a portfolio of two assets or two stocks. Now we're going to extend this with a portfolio of three assets or three stocks, right? So a portfolio with three assets is what we're going to do. There are assets A, B, and C. Remember that for a portfolio of two assets, the the standard deviation or the variance standard deviation square which is the variance of the portfolio was given by weight of a square sigma of a square plus weight of b square sigma of b square plus 2 weight of a weight of b into covariance of a and b right if there are three assets then there are so also we, we noted that in a two cross two scenario in a two asset portfolio we get a two cross two matrix which is one two three four terms so logically in a three asset portfolio what should we get we should get a three cross three matrix right we should get a three cross three matrix and we will need three different terms around this nine different terms around this right so what are the nine terms going to be we will add one more term here so that's third term one two and three and here we will add two w a w b w c covariance of a and c plus two w b w c covariance of b and c right so there are three terms which are these and there are 2 plus 2 plus 2, 6 terms which come out of here. So 3 plus 6 will give me 9 terms, right? Let's recap what we mean that the returns are still weighted average if there are 3 assets in the portfolio. But the variance is given by WA square sigma A square, WB square sigma B square, WC square sigma B sigma C square. Then we take 2 assets at a time, find the covariance between those 2 and calculate this WAWB covariance of RAB, WAWC covariance of RAC, and WBWC covariance of RBC. Right? That's what we are doing. So basically, we are going to create a matrix once again on our Excel file, and we are then going to try and figure out whether it makes sense and it adds up to the correct number or not. So let's go to our Excel file. For simplicity, what I have done is I have basically copied this table which we had used for our two asset portfolio and just put it here, right? This is just a simple copying of the formula, right? I just linked the formula there and then I put DLF Aishar Hindalko so that we know what we are doing, right? Now let's say there is a three asset portfolio where we are saying DLF Aishar and Hindalko have a weightage of 30% 30% and 40% each, right? So we're going to write, copy this and paste this here. And we're going to copy this and paste this here. And remember, this is the covariance matrix. So I'm going to find the covariance of the intersecting data points. So here it will be DLF with DLF. Here it will be Hindalco with DLF, right? So let's write covar and in newer versions it's covariance P. DLF with DLF. What is the DLF array? That's E8 to E500 and I'm going to write E8 to E500 once again. Right? That's what we do. E8 to E500 once again. Correct? And then I can just copy and paste this formula here. It will do F8 with F500, but I will change it then to E8 and E500. And then here, and then I will change this to E8 and E500. So that's the covariance, right? Here, I'm going to do covar covariance of F8 to F500, which is here, comma, DLF, 
which is E8 to E500, right? And then I can just change F in this, F with F, sorry, we have to change F8 to F500 and I can copy this here. In this we have to do F with G, right? And finally, I need to do covariance P of Hindalco, which is G8 to G500, comma, DLF. So that's E8 to E500. Close that. I'll copy. And so this has to be G and G and I'll copy and this has to be G with G. Right? One second. Yeah. So what do we see? Let's format this. Let's add five or six decimal points. Now compare the diagonals. Compare the diagonal the cells that are shaded this. We see this is the variance of DLF, this is the variance of Aisher, and the final one is the variance of Hindalco returns that we calculate here, correct? And now let's look at the symmetric data point. So look at this and this. <coughs> These are covariances of Aisher with TLF. Look at this and this. This is the covariance of Hindalco with Aisher. And look at this and this. This is the covariance of Hindalco with DLF. So covariance of DLF with Aisher is the same as covariance of Aisher with DLF. And those are the nine terms that we get, right? So what is what are these three? These are the sigma squares. And this is covariance of AB, DLF and Aisher, right? Let's put the weightages. So I can copy this here and I can do a transpose of this here. And now can I calculate the portfolio variance? I can just copy paste this formula. I'm going to delete all this and let's copy. So what's this going to be? That's 30% into 30% into 1075, right? Now, remember that when I drag this on the right side, if I copy and paste this cell on the right side, and let's also change the color for all of these. If I copy and paste this on the right side, what do I want? I want this 30 to change to this 30, which means I want E to change to F, but I don't want to change the row, right? So in E527, I'm going to freeze the row. Correct. In E527, in E527, I'm freezing only the row. In C529, I have to freeze C. When I drag it on the right, I don't want C to change, but when I drag it down, I want 529 to change to 530, right? So here, I'm going to freeze C and I press enter. I can drag this, I can drag this. You will note that <coughs> now it looks at the corresponding weights and multiplies them, right? You will note that these two terms are the same. So I can shade them in one color. You will note that these two terms are the same. So I can shade them in another color. And you will note that these two terms are the same. I can put them in another color. The similar terms are covariance of A, B twice, right? So in this formula, if you remember, there is this two that we see. That's because the same term is coming twice, right? So that's why we see this two there. 
and that's what we are basically looking at in our Excel file and all I need to do is the portfolio variance is going to be the sum of this entire set right and the portfolio standard deviation is going to be the square root of the variance and that's the portfolio standard deviation I can change the weights I can change the weights and uh, try and see how that plays out in order to minimize the data so I can do let's say 20% and a 35% and the remaining is 45% here and I can do a 20% and 35% and 45% here and we find the portfolio standard deviation goes down further right so we can keep doing these data changes and we can identify what is one of the lowest standard deviations of the portfolio based on respective weightages that we take for these three assets right so I can choose any set of weights and then try and arrive at what is going to be the portfolio standard deviation right that's basically this calculation what we have done is a quick understanding of a three asset portfolio remember in a three asset portfolio you will create a matrix that is going to be three cross three if it is a four asset portfolio it will be a matrix of four cross four so no difference these terms are sigma square weight of a square or weight of b square sigma of b square and weight of c square sigma of c square that's the term that you see here this is going to be and if this is a b c and this is a b c this term is going to be weight of a weight of b covariance of a b right this is weight of a weight of C covariance of a C similarly weight of a weight of C covariance of a C weight of a weight of B covariance of a B weight of B weight of C covariance of B C and weight of B weight of C covariance of B C so this and this give you two weight of B weight of C covariance of B C two weight of a weight of b covariance of a b two weight of a weight of c covariance of a c sigma square sigma square sigma square right that's these terms that we find so a covariance variance or variance covariance matrix is this n cross n matrix if there are n assets in the portfolio you will find this to be n cross n matrix where all the diagonals will represent the variances and all the other terms symmetrically will be similar because you're doing 2a to b kind of a thing 2 into weight of a weight of b covariance of a b right that's basically a three asset portfolio that's it in this particular uh, section in the next section we're going to basically put up a small case and understand how we can use this discussion to kind of come up with an interesting portfolio Thank you.